evening all. I wrap Stina Flynn and Associates with your metal market wrap up for this Monday, the 27th of July, 2020. And we're about 6.40 p.m. Central Time. Beautiful. Noticing it getting a little darker earlier than it used to. Hot still, though, in Chicago, although toning down a little. <laughs> you know, they close the markets and then they reopen. You're almost up a dollar in silver. You're up $27 in the gold market. Copper market, having trouble here in the $2.90 to $3, $3 an ounce uh, a pound range. Platinum still good, palladium good. Stock market, probably a bit quiet right here. There's an awful lot going on. So we've got, as you know, the two-day FOMC meeting. We have the situation going on and what's going to happen for the COVID relief payments. They're meeting, I understand tonight, the Democrats and Republicans, the top big wigs from the House, the big wigs from the Senate, different party controls, Mnuchin, Meadows. We've got a lot of people meeting. What can they work out? For those of you that get my full research, I wrote up a synopsis of what's going on and where the arguments lie and what, where they're at at this point. Dollar breaking apart. Now, when the dollar breaks this hard, it's generally a boon to the commodity markets. Anything priced in oil, in oil. Anything priced in dollars, my head's, <laughs> my tongue's ahead of my, uh, what I'm doing here. But anything priced in dollars, which oil is one of those, well, you're paying with something that's falling in value. You can get, if you take your currency, I'm assuming you're not dollar-based or tied exactly to the dollar, uh, you can take your currency and oftentimes get a good deal because your currency's worth more. Imagine going right now to Europe. Just recently you were at 112 euro. Now you're pushing here into the euro market uh, nearly the 118 level. If you think it's a little bit of money, it isn't. Go out and buy something expensive and you find out just how good it is in terms of uh, the euro if they could come here and travel, we'd have all the Europeans here. Nobody can travel, so it's a currency play. Nothing get really getting done except hard goods that can be exported. In the gold market, what can you say but this is a run to all-time highs. So this is history. Each new high, such as just now, 1961.40, well, that's a new record for the market. You can see how the markets run out of this from the sideways action, and we get to see more of that action when we put on here the swing line, which got the higher lows, higher highs, and it's not looked back. This market has not had, in this whole breakout, a lower low day. Are you looking at that? That's what I was looking for, waiting for that break in the market, and it just didn't offer it. The market's not allowed you back in on a break of any type. The market held the 18 day moving average of closes and launched itself. It's now had, at this point, this is the sixth day in a row over the upper Bollinger Band. Now it's five in a row on a closing basis. I promise you, go back and count how many in a year that happens to. You'll be, on one hand, not using all your digits on a lead month. That's how rare it is. It's a sign of unbelievable strength. You don't fight that. The odds are at any point here, this market's going to just move to the right-hand side of that. That is not a sign of weakness. It's just the, the algorithm and price are going to come together and do it. So prices won't stay over that much longer. Can it go beyond seven days? It certainly could. I've never counted the most that it's done, but it's probably under 10 on a lead contract month. You don't go back months because on the back months, the action's a bit different. It's all spread related. When we take a look at the momentum, you have an embedded reading. So what do we have? We had a market that broke out of overall sideways action, has exploded to the upside. If you trade, you're probably better off trading the smaller size gold contracts. And yes, there are micros and macro contracts. You might be better off with those because the moves, just like tonight, you're already a $30 move. That's $3,000 a contract. The gold-silver ratio crashing in. You've now lost approximately $50. It got up to a differential of 125. So I said dollars, but it's 125, uh, the ratio of gold to silver down to 76. So you've lost 50 of those points. Big. When you look at the uh, silver, it did get a close back under it. So you're not as extreme. I know it sounds crazy, but if you throw the name off the chart, the action's not extreme as gold, which could have seven 
closes in a row over the Bollinger Band, and you're not going to have that in this market. Now, you've got strong stochastics embedded, breaks in this market likely to be well supported. And no, don't try to pick a top. You have a whole different world in the copper market. The market's made its run to the 18-day average looking for its support. We've notified you, at least I have, that the $3 level looks like a trading top because the Bollinger Band peaked out there. And we also, from that level, had a point where the market started making lower highs, lower lows. And the pattern on the chart right now, well, if we take a look, we have this low here of 286.65. The low right here is 284.50. So we have, and you always got to do that, you have a pattern of higher lows, but you've got that lower high. Well, I don't know. This high right here, let's do this together, is a 298.20. I don't think this is 298.20. It's 297.60. Always do that. So you've got your bullish situation. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm wrong there. This should be an arrow pointing up. Higher lows, higher highs, support against the 18-day average of closes. What the bulls don't want to see taken out on this pattern then is 286.65. Glad I caught that just now because it's staring me right in the face. In the platinum market, you broke out of what I call a pipe. And this is what a pipe looks like. It's very tightly bound by the upper and lower Bollinger Band in an ideal pipe. The market's just drifting sideways often near that 18-day average to center point. And you try the downside, you don't go anywhere. You try the upside, you don't go anywhere. You're sort of playing back and forth. And it makes it very difficult to know when is the market going to get a breakout and continue with it. One of the things I teach you here is I'm looking for two days in a row where you close higher on the day, higher than each other ideally, each one in the top quadrant. Then I've got my breakout. I wouldn't want to see prices under these lows and it can go anywhere. This is a breakout with a big base and you can see what the market's been doing. So far that's working real well. In the Palladium, it's the same thing. And Palladium is one of these markets when it decides to rock and roll it does so in a way that leaves these other metals in its dust. So this is very powerful basing action. The market has broken out. You can see this and it's not giving up. It's just crushing anyone short. So you don't pick a top. You're waiting for the deep breaks where you can come in, manage your control in the market. If you feel you got to get in here, it's going to run. Consider options maybe, option spreads, where you cut down the deltas and the volatility because this is not going to be easy for you to control. They raised the silver margin, I'm not sure I said it, to 10,000 tonight from the 9,000 level. I don't think that was enough. I think they should have gone to maybe 11, but uh, that's my opinion. Dollar index just falling apart. Now, here too, we've got an extreme where the market is staying underneath the Bollinger Band. If we come back to these closes one by one, under the Bollinger Band, right here, under the band, two days in a row. On this day, the market uh, was at 94.64. The Bollinger Band is at 73. You're under it, you're under it. I think you're under it right here, uh, 94.38 to 42, yeah. So you can see, it's just continuing. An unusual circumstance, very highly unusual, stretched like this, eventually you'll get a bounce, but the market is telling you how bearish it is. I think I've been right in telling people how bearish I've been for a long time. Gorilla glue trades. Those happen in the metals when you just hone in on that upper Bollinger Band and you're locked in, and the dollar index to the downside. This is just powerhouse stuff. Let's talk about what I do for you. You know, early in the mornings, and I'm talking at 5.30, 5.40 in the morning, I have already begun recording my first videos for my subscribers. I typically am up 3.34 in the morning, and believe me, I read like a madman, have my coffee, sometimes my cereal, and away I go. And it's quiet, obviously. I've got in the background, uh, I, I can tell you, watch Maria Bartolomo, I'm watching Bloomberg finish up. Then I wait to see what's going to happen on CNBC as the boys come in to tell us how the morning's going to shape up there. But those are the two that I'm honing in on the morning. But I read all the papers from China to the Financial Times, uh, the Telegraph. I mean, I'm reading stuff all over the place looking to see 
what the world is thinking of the marketplace. And I bring that to you, and I'll tell you what the reports of the day look like, if there were any reports in Europe or Asia, what they looked like. I cover the markets for you in great detail. There's 40 charts that I cover. They're gonna be right in here. As part of this subscription, I'm now beginning the Sunday live webinars and how those are gonna work just so you get a feel for them. You'll get an invite as one of the subscribers. It is free to you as long as you sign up with that subscription before the cutoff date. After the cutoff date, I'm gonna open it to the general public so they can come in, they're gonna pay a fee. Your subscription includes that fee. As I told you, I'm gonna start doing more special reports. I'm now to the point where uh, I'm comfortable starting to roll things out for the fall season. I realize it's only July, I'm, my mind's already into the fall season. So I wanna be there with it, and I, I want this stuff to be able to accomplish what you want. So how do you find out about what I'm doing? It's simple, just go to our website, under the word research, it's all there. I know you didn't get this video coming out this weekend, my decision. I'd make it too easy for you to count on me all the time for them. I want my subscribers to have the edge. The other people that see this for free, if they become subscribers, what did I do this weekend? I did the weekend videos, 40 charts, weekend charts, weekly charts for them on both the futures markets and spider ETFs. And I didn't do them this week on the uh, YouTube. Doesn't mean I won't continue. You'll have to check to see when I do it. All right, so that's where we're at. Hope you have a good evening. I will. I will talk to you first thing in the morning.